Nityan, guys, welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityan the Paramashivam. So today's video, I want to answer my clicks, my realization regarding um, how we are responsible for the life that is manifesting outside of us and what does it mean when I say I am Paramashiva, right? In terms of how I'm manifesting what's happening. And it's basically regarding to um, a question I got in some of the previous videos in the comments. So um, there's few things that were mentioned in the question which I want to share about. And one of them was like, oh, how I'm walking in the street and somebody, a car is passing in front of me. How have I created that? I was not even aware of the car in the first place. Or, you know, same thing goes, there's a bird on the tree. And I'm not sure, like, how have I created the bird, or have I created, or is it the Leela, or there's many questions. Um, so the first thing I wanted to share was something that Swamiji shared um, some time back in a satsang, which when I heard, it answered a lot of questions for me. And it's he was basically sharing of how an avatar functions, or how, yeah, how an avatar functions. And the key words was, I do not have any form of anxiety about the future. So the click I had when Swamiji shared that was, when we get introduced to this powerful cognition, I am responsible for everything inside of me and everything outside of me. Automatically, what I've experienced, and I, I'm pretty sure a lot of other you perhaps is also experiencing um we tend to feel like we start to feel like oh how have i created this oh how have i created that oh how is i good how i the mind it, it has the because the, the mind is established in the fear the fundamental uh, space from which the mind operates is fear um it is always wanting to control and possess and when we when we learn that we are responsible for everything then we just try to possess everything around us and say, oh, how am I responsible for this? How am I responsible for that? Then we become crazy. <laughs> and what I realized is, uh, no, actually, that is not the truth. And we should not spend lifetime and energy into that direction because it's not going to lead anywhere. The first step that we need to have the cognitive shift is regarding what Swamiji was saying, sharing. There is no anxiety about the future. That means that this very behavior of the mind of wanting to understand and control everything outside of us, what we cognize outside of us, um, this very behavior disappears. Then we start to cognize everything differently. Um, and it is so important. Every time you think about your future, it is because of anxiety. If you were not anxious, there is no reason why you would want to project yourself in what you call future. There is no future. There is no past. There is only now. So the power of now is the power that Swamiji was sharing uh, or started to share when he talks about the Kala dimension. The Big Bang and the Black Hole and the millions of years in between are happening simultaneously now. So it's very mind-boggling understanding or principle or concept, uh, but it is the reality and we have to contemplate on it to allow our mind to break and for us to experience the multi-dimensional universe, the multi-dimensional logic, Sankhya. And we can also at the same time realize how the 25 heads of Paramashiva operate and how they are happening inside of us simultaneously, constantly and keeping the whole um, universe alive simultaneously now so um, anxiety of the future is the key when we realize Paramashivoham as Swamiji was sharing when he realized the Paramashivoham he realized as a cognition not as an understanding as a cognition he realized that he is taken care of like really taken care of completely which means that there's no reason of having fear about the future because fundamentally he knows I am taken care of. So it is completely useless to spend a little bit of your lifetime and energy 
to think about the future where you can use the same lifetime energy now and do something with it. It's like if you have 100 units to use, you're using 25 units to think about the future, which is completely silly because it is not real. Might as well take these 25 units and use them now so that you can use 100% of your units now and create um, at the create something greater and something more complete now because you're fully involved in it and that also for me clicked with this principle of awareness right when you're in the now you're fully aware when you're in the future in the past you're not fully aware part of you is stuck somewhere in some other space which is not even real it is just created by the mind because of this anxiety of the future um, so that's one click I wanted to share regarding this. So it's not about trying to understand how I manifested this, how I manifested that. First step is like this, this anxiety of the future, not being stuck in, uh, in anxiety about the future. The second thing, sometimes I feel um, I had a click, for instance, okay? Um, I disagree with the lifestyle that is available nowadays, for instance. That's, that's kind of my fundamental, that's one of the cognition which is sitting in my depth. I don't agree with the lifestyle. Um, then you go into traffic and you get stuck in traffic and you experience the wonderful things that we experience in traffic. And then you become incomplete about it. Why is this happening, you know? For instance, why is the car coming? I didn't see. Or why is it so slow? Or why are people so frustrated? Or why so many whys will be arising? And then you will start to attend to each why one at a time and think, oh, how am I responsible for this? One bigger, one first thing I realized also is before jumping into the small things, see the bigger picture. You're not aligned. You feel that you don't like the lifestyle. But you're not doing any, you're not, you have not spent lifetime and energy to manifest a life where you do not need to engage with that lifestyle if you don't like traffic and you don't like the lifestyle then why do you put yourself in a situation where you will experience traffic so i feel that should be the first step of taking responsibility it's not about trying to control everything that is going on once you're in your car in traffic it's more about like, why do you want to engage with that whole thing in the first place? This, for instance, traffic experience. So there are some people who are living life and they never experience traffic. Different kinds of life. Not only talking about the monk life, but different kinds of life are available where people do not experience traffic. Why? Because deep down they decided, I don't want it. And they started to invest their lifetime and energy like, in whatever they want. And they manifested a life where they do not engage with any of these things so it's possible it's just depending on like how sincere you are is it just a thought which just crosses your mind oh i don't like traffic or is it really something that you really want to discard from your life so that's where the level of sincerity and authenticity also kicks in regarding what we want and again um difference and i'll make a video about it because for me it was also very useful this idea of like what is your really desire and what are borrowed desires superficial desires that you kind of grabbed on the way but they're not really yours but for for various reasons you decided to cling on to them and uh, and they kind of dilute your intensity because they're not yours so you never engage fully uh, with again uh, with them and at the same time, you never discard them. It, so it kind of dilutes the inner space and we become, uh, it becomes very difficult for us to be uh, intense or authentic in, the, in what we do. So um, yeah, that's what I want to share in this video. Um, I'll definitely share more in some other videos. I mean, this is a huge topic and there's a lot of questions. If you have any questions regarding that, how you're responsible for things inside of you and outside of you, um, See, the fundamental thing also I want to share is Paramashiva manifested himself as many to enjoy himself. So it's not necessarily about, oh, why is the bird sitting on the tree? Well, how did I create that? This very idea, this very, uh, this very uh, fundamental questioning of like why and how and this, this, this kind of thirst to understand what is going on. It's not what I'm starting to realize. It's, it's not about understanding what's going on. 
it's just about being blissful and enjoying yourself because you are Paramashiva, that bird is Paramashiva, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> then you just have to enjoy yourself. There's no reason. The reasons, what I'm starting to realize is this very thing of constantly trying to find a reason why, 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 why is, is a fundament, fund, fundamental thing of the mind which is dissatisfied about everything and he just wants to understand and justify everything because deep down he just doesn't want to engage with any of this. It's very, it's life negative. So it's not about necessarily trying to understand how and why but more about seeing the bigger picture, understanding about the anxiety of the future, dropping that coming back to a space of eternal bliss, of oneness, and simply enjoying and being blissful with other manifestations of super consciousness. So with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, like, comment, check the description below, a lot of interesting things. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Nityandam.